Having referred to the facts which confront the British people when it comes to the European Union and the referendum, I think it's only right that I now deal with the uh, headings or sections of those facts which confront us. There are three in essence. There's a question of international trade and our economy. The second one is immigration. And the third one is self-government and our democracy. Let's come to, let's come to trade and uh, industry and the economy first. For a long time I've been asking myself, well I've been asking myself throughout uh, the last few years, why David Cameron would lie to the people. Now Frank Field has said uh, that he thinks it's a bad thing for those of us who are in favour of, of leaving um, to question the integrity of the Prime Minister. Well, it would be very nice if we could stop doing so. But the man like Obama, who came over here not to wish the Queen a happy birthday, but because the European Union and America are deeply involved in the TTIP, so-called trade negotiations, um, and he is uh, in the pay of uh, these multinational corporations that TTIP is a attempting uh, to hand the, the American democracy um, to, in insofar as America is concerned, and where our so-called European leaders are deeply enmeshed in handling, in finally allowing the banks, multinational companies and self-appointed bureaucrats of Europe to take final and full control. Now David Cameron has done nothing to fight this. He went into Europe, he said, uh, in, with an, an, a, to make an attempt to renegotiate, to reform Europe. And as I said in my last conversation, he spent lots of time, as indeed as, as Os Osborne, talking about we ought to be members of a reformed Europe. Well, as I've said before, um, I don't think any of us believe we, we don't want to be a member of a reformed Europe. The problem is there's no reformation going on and reformation is impossible. And if this TTIP agreement, for example, goes through, um, will never again be possible. We have therefore to ask ourselves, how much is he being paid? What is his gain from selling the people short? Now I don't want to I don't want to come to that conclusion, but what other conclusion can you come to? He said he'd, he wanted to reform or negotiate changes with Europe that would be to our advantage, and he's done nothing. I mean uh, paying um, immigrants benefits in installments instead of from day one is I mean, it's an insult to the intelligence of the population, isn't it? I mean, we we have to live with this situation, or we do, our children, our grandchildren, and those who come after have to live with this type of agreement. Um, and we, obviously, we don't want to. Why would we? So, when it, when it comes to um, trade and the economy... Um, Europe is about to hand, or wants to hand, totally hand, um, the future of Europe, control over Europe, to these uh, multinational organisations and banks. Um, and David Cameron is complicit. Now, if he's complicit in, and wants to see that sort of agreement uh, reached, then what on earth is wrong with the man? I mean, he's either... Um, in their pay or is there are some other motivation we can't see and there's certainly no way in which um, the TTIP arrangement could be uh, interpreted as meaning our advantage to the UK. For example um, Europe would then be flooded with um, genetically modified foodstuffs we'd have no control over stopping it. 
And in the event that we object to it and say that we're not having it, then the uh, corporations concerned, the companies concerned, would be in a position to sue our government. And they would win. It wouldn't go to our courts. It goes to this little um, arbitration group, which is appointed, of course, by these same corporations. So, as I said in my last conversation, the nuts and bolts of... Uh, of our trade in the short term. I mean, I, I've I've recently watched the, I don't know what she's called, the Director General of the uh, CBI, trotting out statements about how long it takes to negotiate uh, trade agreements with countries, and when she's referring solely to the hash of the the whole thing, which has been um, perpetrated by the EU. Everything points back to the EU and its non-democratic nature. So therefore, sure, we have to put up with uh, the possibility that we are, do have some short-term economic um, problems to overcome. But these problems are, are not avoided by staying in the EU and finding ourselves um, subjected to this TTIP arrangement. It literally is handing over our future to multinational corporations. They, 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 sure, they have voted on, or their boards have voted for by um, their shareholders, insofar as that has any real bearing on the subject. But um, we don't appoint them, and we never will. So here we are in a situation where, as far as trade and industry is concerned, we can, we, we can look forward to something that's even worse than we have now, and there's no question about it. This is not a question of debate. It's not a question of whether or not um, uh, these things are good for us or bad for us. They're invariably bad. And there's no question they're invariably bad. So where's the debate? Why can somebody say, well, we ought to stay in this? Say, oh, yes, sure, let's go along with the tip, tip arrangement and then were enthralled to the multinational companies and banks. Does that make any sense? Of course it doesn't. Uh, might we lose the odd job when it comes to uh, opting out of Europe? Yeah, I'm sure it's possible. But on the other hand, we'll, we'll create jobs right, left and centre by trading with other nations in the world. We don't... It's been said by many people, much more capable than I, um, that we don't need trade agreements in order to trade. I mean, I'm sure we don't have a big trade agreement with China, but every time I pick up something, it seems to be made in China. I want to see me. I want to pick up things that say British made, made in Britain, etc., etc. And I want our industry to thrive. And the only way our industry is going to thrive, because 95% of it, or whatever the percentage is, doesn't trade with Europe at all. It just supplies the British people. Let's keep on supplying the British people. If we have to pay slightly more for our food or whatever, so what? I know this is hard for some people, but the fact remains is that, that uh, there'll be far less um, unemployment. There'll be far more uh, prospects of internal growth with industries reborn. It'll take time. Yes, I know it won't. It probably won't happen in my lifetime it, to the degree I'd like to see it, but it will happen. So no TTIP, no Europe, and no stupid um, submission by uh, so-called leaders that um, it's beneficial to us, that we're safer if we stay inside the EU. It's a complete nonsense, and we all know that it is. Right, now let's come to the question of immigration. Um, those who believe we should uh, be happy about um, the numbers of people coming into this country, um, and, uh, and I hasten to add, numbers of people be outside our control. If we, for example, I heard, uh, I heard a, um, a farmer, a vegetable farmer, saying that he relied very heavily on the, uh, labour from the eastern, former eastern, Soviet bloc coming to this country um, for him to run his business and uh, 
if we start control and I heard a, a cheese manufacturing um, company say something similar that uh, they need to have these um, immigrant workers if their businesses are to survive what they're really saying is that um, they don't want to pay uh, British labor the living wage or anything like a living wage they want to get the cheapest possible labor they can they want to be able to discard it at the drop of a hat whereas there are other industries and other companies um, within the UK who given the freedom to do so would have trade arrangements or and would be selling it's a better way of putting it would be selling to um, other nations in the world way beyond the EU and I have to restate this once again the EU is 28 countries out of something like 40 in Europe and God knows how many in the world we really are not bound by a stupid uh, political politically motivated attempt to put us all into one heap and uh, have total control over us so we I've said this before and I'll I'll say it till I'm blue in the face we want to retain the British identity and by the British identity I mean the English Irish Scottish and Welsh identities we have been together as a, a unit or a, a united um, set of countries for well, what is it I don't know 300 years since Scotland um, the final punch up with Scotland in although we the Scottish nationals would like us to have another apparently um, we've we've been together in the United Kingdom for, for during that period but I, I don't see any merging of uh, the identities of uh, English Irish Scottish and Welsh people do you have you seen this uh, do the Scots give up being Scots um, do they t want to integrate with us and uh, integrate with the British with the English and um, throw away their national identity of course they don't why would they and they never would and as I once said if a Frenchman came comes to England he, if he's here for 50 years he he won't give up his culture and his nationality he's a Frenchman and why not and this is what it, this, what the world all, is all about so we don't want to have a flow of people into this country a that without question never mind about what uh, politicians try to say that you can't keep increasing the number of people and expect not to have strain additional sometimes unbearable strain on our general infrastructure you can't expect the National Health Service which continuously improves its ability to treat people for new diseases and, and saves lives um, way beyond uh, uh, its what was its, its expectation when it was founded we can't expect that to go on absorbing and treating more and more and more people I mean as it is we're living longer so if we're living longer then by definition the problem gets bigger and the older the people the more um, treatment potentially is required now that's not going to stop why would we pump loads of people into the bottom all we, all we need to do is carry on behaving the way we used to behave we want to carry on being British so I have nothing against I've said this more than once and 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 it pains me to have to say it again I'm not opposed to immigration I'm in I'm opposed to uncontrolled immigration immigration we don't want people coming into this country unless we decide we want them it's our country it's not theirs it's not a free-for-all I don't want somebody in Brussels sitting there and telling me that um, we ought to have this a group from here and a group from there and we ought to share this out fairly no we have a country as identity to sustain and maintain and in order to do that we must be free to decide who comes into this country now there's nothing racist or um, 
in dislike of uh, immigrants involved in that. Nothing at all. We just want, I mean, somebody said that, that, that if, if industries or some industries need unskilled labour and they can't get it from British people, that these people, that the, an influx of people to fill those jobs can't be allowed into the country because they're not skilled. This is a this is another smoke screen that's being put up. If we want people to do various things, then by definition we're perfectly free to allow them to do so. The objection is when anybody can come into the country and we have no jurisdiction over whether they do or not. That's the argument. And anybody who says, well, the, that means you want to close the borders and etc., it doesn't mean anything of the sort. It means that what we want is to be able to control who comes in, especially in a world where terrorism and the threat of terrorism is so advanced. Now, if if we have to allow free it, this argument about, well, you know, two and a half million people or whatever uh, uh, British people are living in various parts of the EU, etc. Some live in France, some live in... Yeah, sure. But we're not talking about... Um, how many people are coming into Europe in this argument as immigrants? We're talking about how many people are coming to the UK as immigrants. We have to be able to control it. And we have to say, right, we want more carpenters. We, we look for more carpenters. We want more unskilled labourers for the south of England. Then, by definition, we can seek to find unskilled labour for the south of England. And anybody suggests otherwise, it's just denying the facts of the situation. I don't dislike immigrants. Why would we? If I was in their situation, I'd probably be doing exactly the same thing. But I'd like the country I'm going to, to willingly accept me. I wouldn't want to ride roughshod over uh, local sensibilities or whatever. I would want to know that when I entered the country, I was coming in because the people there wanted and needed me. It's not unreasonable. It's not unreasonable in either direction. And so that's my argument. It's a simple argument. And any idea that we do control our, or, uh, our borders or we, we won't be able to control them any more if we leave the EU is our nonsense. And it's quite clear that it is. So that deals with, as far as I'm concerned, with immigration. Now let's deal with self-government and democracy. The biggest complaint we have about the EU is that it's undemocratic. It's as simple as that. The people who govern us are not elected and the TTIP prospects mean that it, even they are going to pass over control or want to pass over control to multinational banks and multinational companies who are going to have no interest whatsoever in anything other than profitability for their shareholders. That's it, in a nutshell. In other words, we will do what we are told, or we'll find ourselves with problems. And if we try to do other than we are told by them, then our government will find itself using valuable tax revenues to reward... Um, multinational companies for transactions they haven't completed. So in other words, it's even, it's even uh, a motivation on, as far as they're concerned, just to get TTIP passed when they can start selling in this country, re regardless of whether we like it or whether we don't. And if we decide we don't, we find ourselves being fined for not liking it. It's a takeover. It's, in my opinion, it's a world takeover. And we want to control our own destiny. Now, it doesn't mean that everything we choose to do in the future will be right. It means we want to, to control our future. That's it, in a nutshell. And surely there can be nobody who's British um, who wants to do otherwise. Now, as I said, my next-door neighbour and his son... Um, have very little faith in what goes on at Westminster. Um, no more faith, in fact, than they do of what goes on in Brussels. And I quite understand this thinking, but we need to change that. 
Who's going to change that? Is David Cameron? Of course he isn't. We have to change it. And the only way we have even the remotest possibility of changing it is to take control of our own destiny. We can then set about uh, rectifying the the attitudes and behaviour of people who supposedly represent the people. Uh, I'll come back to to some more of this, but the TTIP um, argument um, is, well, I mean, just to see what's uh, proposed, and we haven't seen the half of it because all the so-called negotiations are taking place behind closed doors. They're secret. People are having to sign non-disclosure agreements before they're even allowed to to know anything about what's going on. We're being sold up a pup. We're being sold up the river. Or as I said once before, sold down the Rhine. We are being destroyed. And the same thing will apply to every one of the citizens or subjects of Europe. These pe We, the people, are dispensable as far as multinational companies are concerned. As long as they get their Workforces to do what they're told, when they're told. They'll rid themselves of trade unions. They'll rid themselves of anything that stands in the way of them maximising profit. This includes controls over um, genetically modified food, etc., etc. Now, we want control over ourselves. We want democracy to survive as, because it's disappearing from Europe. And so, incidentally, I believe, do most of the peoples of Europe. That being so, we leave. 